And all this week, we're examining what America is and what we've become in the aftermath of September 11th with a five-part documentary series, a collaboration between ABC News Live and ABC's investigative unit. Tonight, we take a hard look at the role of Guantanamo Bay after 9-11 in housing suspected terrorists captured in the so-called global war on terror. And we hear from former Guantanamo detainee Lakhdar Boumediene. Boumediene's story begins when he was brought into a Bosnian police station back in October 2001, right after the attacks, for questioning about an alleged bombing plot. The guardian the guard he brought me some paperwork. He told me, you're innocent. You can get out. Sign here and take your stuff home. And then a dramatic scene erupted outside. A heavy presence of police in riot gear mobilized at the jail. Instead of releasing Boumediene and the five other men, officers brought them to vans. And at that moment, it was shocking. I saw people wearing hoods, with dogs, handcuffs. Afterwards, they blindfolded me, covered my ears, handcuffed me. In protest, nearly 300 relatives and supporters tried to block the vans from leaving. I heard some Bosnian language, but they were Americans. And then, the six men were handed off to U.S. forces. Our soldiers working with the Bosnian government seized terrorists who were plotting to bomb our embassy. Boumediene and the other accused men, known as the Algerian Six, were flown to Guantanamo Bay. They were among the camp's first detainees, arriving during its second week of operation. The day when I opened my eyes in, in, uh, in cell, I am shocked. Well, ABC's chief investigative reporter Josh Margolin joins us now with more on tonight's episode. Josh, I want to start with where Boumediene Boumed just leaves off there in that clip. He says he was shocked when he opened his eyes at Gitmo. Uh, you've been there. I was there uh, about 15 years ago as well, right after they opened it to reporters. Uh, t tell us, describe what that place is, what it's like, and, and what shocks you about what went on there. Well, first of all, Terry, uh, you know, the, the detention facility that has become so controversial is usually off limits to reporters. Some of us have gotten limited tours, but the, the high value detainees, as they call them, the, the, the highest maximum security detainees, we can't see the facilities that they're actually in. That's just for them and the Red Cross, and I think their lawyers can go in. But Gitmo writ large is a very, very strange environment, and I'm sure you were struck when you first went down there. Parts of the camp, parts of the, remember, it's a, it's a U.S. naval base and has been for 100 years. Parts of it are no different than an army town or a navy town somewhere in Florida or Alabama. You have a McDonald's, you have a general store, you have a pub, you have all sorts of military folks, you have schools for the kids. Very, very normal. But then you get to the high security portion of the camp by the court complex and uh, out, and that's obviously where they bring the detainees and it's very very strange it's set up like it's a forward operating base in Afghanistan or Iraq they don't have permanent buildings to house the attorneys or the uh, office space or the reporters that are out there to cover these various hearings it's very very strange and it's very remote when you're there the first thing that strikes you is even though it's uh, a long-standing US military facility and obviously there's high-tech community communications between the Navy operations there and back in Washington and back in Florida. The communications and the, the access that we as civilian observers have, really next to nothing. It's, it was always very, very strange to be there. And they closed down that camp now uh, where most of the prisoners were being held because right. it was falling apart. It's right. gone on so long it was falling apart. So the Bush administration was covering it back then. They felt the need to go to such as such extremes in our law, extraordinary renditions in the middle of the night, as we just saw, secret prisons, brutal inter interrogations that by any fair definition are torture. You know, at the end of the day, why do you think they did that? Well, 
the, the real benefit of the work that we've done over the last eight months in putting together this documentary series has been not even, you know, has been the research. You know, we don't have to guess. We actually went back to people like Alberto Gonzalez, who was the White House counsel, then the attorney general, to John Bellinger, who was the chief attorney for the National Security Council, to Andy Card, who was President Bush's chief of staff at the time. And we asked all of these questions. You know, they have a, a logical explanation for what occurred. And the bottom line of it was they wanted to take the de people detained in the war on terror in Afghanistan and later Iraq. They wanted to get them to a place that was secure, that was remote, where they could then interrogate them. From there, though, a lot of other kinds of questionable decisions were made. And in fact, John Bellinger, who was the National Security Council chief attorney, he said at the time the first point was not really controversial. Use Gitmo. That's okay. And at that point, Gitmo was really best known for just being, you know, uh, in a few good men. It really wasn't known as a controversial location. But then the other things, when you start hearing about these extraordinary renditions in the middle of the night, you hear about the uh, aggressive interrogation techniques that have been termed by uh, many fair-minded people, like you say, torture. Um, and we go through that tonight in, in the episode. We have actually a really, really stark interview with the first military attorney who raised questions about the type of interrogation techniques. And he sent a memo back to Washington that said, this is just wrong. It shouldn't be done. We have the FBI uh, assistant general counsel who actually raised these questions with the Pentagon, with the Justice Department at the time. And of course, we have Lakhdar Boumediene who suffered through the interrogation techniques. And it's important to know there are some people that are held now at Gitmo who are suspected terrorists. There are some people who have actually pleaded guilty to terrorism charges. Lakhdar Boumedien, in the end, he was not a terrorist. He was released by a federal judge after the government had showed that they had no evidence or reason to keep him. Mm. And, and obviously the reason that the government chose Gitmo is because at that time they thought it was outside the jurisdiction of the federal courts. So they thought they could get away with things there. That is uh, one of the original sins of all this. What's incredible, so I, I've been covering this week the trial of accused 9-11 mastermind Khalid Sheikh Mohammed and, and other uh, of the top value detainees. Uh, he just had pretrial merchants heard this week. I, I witnessed them out at Fort Meade two decades after the attack, 20 years. So what does that tell you about these military trials? tribunals and, and what the original decision to take these high-value detainees out of our legal system torture them, essentially, and then try to put them back in, and the mess that it's made. Look, it, it absolutely is a mess. By any fair reading of what's gone on, it's absolutely a mess. And we actually interviewed Matt Olson, who is a uh, who has been nominated by President Biden to run the National Security Division at the Justice Department. He was President Obama's uh, point man on closing Gitmo. And he says it directly. It is a failure. It The whole thing has become a failure, and it's terrible. And the families tell us that they they want us to know that 20 years later, justice delayed is justice denied. But we know, you and I both know, and the people that cover it know, that even as it falls out of the headlines, there is really no sense that this trial is you know, going to take place this year, next year, the year after. No one really knows. It's, it's entirely possible that we could get to the 25th anniversary and potentially not have any more clarity on this. And it's in part because those original brutal interrogation techniques, they don't want them in that courtroom. And uh, the effort to try to put this genie back in the bottle is just making, uh, making it very complicated, as you say, Josh right, Margolin. Absolutely. Thanks very much. Terry, thank for you being so much. With us. Appreciate it. Uh, and you can catch episode four of the five part docuseries tonight at 8 30 Eastern on ABC News Live. Episodes of 9 11, 20 years later, The Longest Shadow, premiere all week on Hulu. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.